sales manager on the phone. He's got solid feet going and he doesn't know what to do. Huh. Okay. Hey, how's it going? All right, uh, what's your chlorine readings right now? All right, you got 3.0, how about your pH? All right, 7.5? All right, let me check my chemical measures here. All right, you got a 100,000 gallon pool, correct? All right, we need to bring that up to a 10.0. So I need you to add seven gallons uh, to the pool, okay? So I just need you to get a uh, nice clean bucket, go ahead and scoop it out of the vat, and hand feed it around the perimeter of the pool, okay? All right, make sure you wear your safety equipment, all right, bud? Yeah, I got it. I've done this before. You need to bucket seven gallons of chlorine into the pool. All right, let's go. Excuse me. How long will the pool be closed? It's my daughter's birthday party, and we just got here. We'll get it open as soon as we can. It'll be all right, sweetie. Welcome to chemical handling for lifeguards and pool operators. As a lifeguard, it is not unusual to be handling chemicals while performing normal pool maintenance. To ask if synopsis guys is used in pool maintenance, while hazardous, will not cause any physical harm when handled properly. In this program, you will learn the basic rules of chemical handling so you can protect yourself while performing the routine tasks necessary to provide a sanitary environment for your swimmers. The most important rule whenever handling any type of pool chemical is that your personal safety should be your primary concern. Whenever handling any pool chemicals, it is important that you wear your chemical handling safety equipment. The most common type of chemical you will encounter as a lifeguard or pool operator is the water sanitizer. Sanitizers come in many forms. Calcium hypochlorite or powdered chlorine, Trichlor tablets and sodium hypochlorite liquid chlorine are the most common forms. In many indoor heated pools or spas, bromine tablets are commonly used for water sanitation. All sanitizers have strong fumes that are irritating to the eyes, and if inhaled, can cause nausea, vomiting, and respiratory problems. Direct contact with the skin will also cause harsh irritation if not flushed with fresh water. Lifeguards and pool operators often have to adjust the pH of the pool water. For this reason, the second most commonly used hazardous chemical found in pool settings are those that relate to pH adjustment. Muriatic acid and sodium metabisulfate are two chemicals used for pH adjustment. Muriatic acid is found in liquid form and is actually a weaker form of hydrochloric acid. Muriatic acid has extremely strong fumes that will cause respiratory problems if inhaled. And if it comes into contact with your skin, it will also cause extreme skin irritation. Sodium metabisulfate is a less hazardous pH adjuster. It is found in a solid powder form. Still, extreme caution should be used when adding this pH adjuster to your pool. Other less volatile chemicals that are commonly used around pools include, but are not limited to, soda ash, sodium bicarbonate, calcium chloride, sodium thiosulfate, and cyanuric acid. While these chemicals are less volatile than the sanitizers and acids, pool operators must use caution when handling these chemicals, and be sure to read the labels for proper application to the pool water. Chemicals that are needed for daily or weekly water balancing are usually stored on site where they are readily accessible. 
For your safety, it is extremely important to follow the rules of chemical storage. First, choose your chemical storage site carefully. Avoid storing chemicals, especially oxidizers, near water heaters, electrical panels, pool pumps, and metal support structures. Fumes from these chemicals will cause metals to corrode and deteriorate. Chemicals must be stored in a dry, well-ventilated room, with signs warning of the dangers of chemicals being stored in the room. Now, let's review the chemical storage rules. 1. No smoking near chemicals. 2. All chemicals need to be stored in properly labeled containers. 3. All chemicals must be stored at least 4 inches off the ground. 4. Do not store chemicals where they could possibly become cross-contaminated. 5. Material safety data sheets for all chemicals must be kept on site. No matter how routine the chemical handling task may be, no task should be performed without wearing all chemical handling safety gear. A proper chemical handling safety kit should consist of a chemical resistant apron, chemical resistant gloves, a respirator rated for protection against chemical fumes, and chemical splash protective eyewear. When adding any type of chemical to your pool, these 12 basic rules must always be followed. One, always wear all of the chemical safety equipment. Two, Keep all patrons or untrained personnel away from the area. Three, be sure to take all tests and know the volume of your pool before determining the amount of chemical needed for treatment. Read the label for proper dosage and always check the expiration date. Four, turn your head away to avoid coming in contact with the initial release of the fumes when opening a chemical storage container. Five, Always use a dry, clean scoop when measuring and adding the desired chemical. Six, each chemical must have its own measuring scoop to avoid cross-chemical contamination. Seven, always add chemicals to water, never water to chemicals, as a potential harmful reaction and or spill may occur. Eight, after measuring with the scoop, do not set it down on the ground. Place the scoop directly back into the container. A wet or dirty scoop can cause a chemical reaction. Nine, reseal the chemical container immediately. 10, always mix chemicals poolside with a water source for cleanup nearby. 11, never ever mix chemicals. Mixing chemicals can cause a hazardous condition that may result in death. 12, do not reuse storage containers. Thoroughly rinse empty containers and dispose of them as directed by the manufacturer and your local, state, and OSHA regulations. If you're adding chemicals to the pool and have a small spill, the spill can be cleaned by flushing it into the pool using a hose or bucket. All spills should be cleaned up immediately. If you spill a small amount of chemical on your skin, you should immediately flush your skin with water for at least 15 minutes. Jumping into the pool is another option to quickly dilute the spilled chemical off your body. In the event of a large chemical spill, put on all chemical safety equipment and contain the spilled material as soon as possible to prevent contamination with foreign material with which it may react. If you're unsure how to manage a spill, call your employer for direction or refer to the material safety data sheets on site. Keep spilled material dry. Sweep and or scoop all spilled material and place in a clean, dry labeled container for disposal. Once dry cleanup is complete, wash the area of the spill with large amounts of water. Dispose of waste in accordance with all local, state, and federal regulations. As the chemical begins to smolder, or you encounter a chemical fire, do not use a dry chemical fire extinguisher. Only use water on a smoldering chemical, or call the fire department if it's too large of a fire to handle. Material safety data sheets need to be available for every chemical stored on site. MSDS sheets describe the chemicals in detail, proper cleanup procedures, 
as well as poison control information relating to the chemical if it is ingested. Take some time to familiarize yourself with the MSDS for the chemicals you will be using. If MSDS information is not on site, ask your employer to provide them for you. Although the first responsibility of being a lifeguard is to provide a safe and sanitary environment for your patrons, never put yourself at risk while trying to do so. Always remember to wear your chemical safety equipment, follow the rules of chemical handling, and make sure all of your chemicals are stored properly. Proper chemical safety is a must for all lifeguards and pool operators.